Hello number ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Metaton speaking. Now for those of you who have been following uh, my channel and watching my content for a while, you will remember the name Anthony Cummings. Now he's an author mostly writing about the samurai and the ninja I have uh, sometimes co uh, collaborated with um, because he, he's not really a YouTuber but he occasionally posts uh, videos on YouTube talking about the things that he researched for, for his books. Now Anthony recently went to Japan, spent a few months there, I believe two or three months and I don't remember the exact exact um, amount of the exact time but during his stay there he was he mostly he spent some time in uh, Wakayama and while he was there he actually started uh, practicing uh, Yaido because he wanted to try and he was practicing under Sensei or Master Ikeda and interestingly enough uh, he managed to uh, make an interview uh, to have an interview with uh, Ikeda Sensei and uh, he asked him a few questions which have to do with uh, Yaido called you in general and how it stands when compared to uh, original samurai combat and I think that these questions he poses are very interesting and he actually sent me the footage of this video now uh, before actually sharing this video with you I'd like to say a few things about first Anthony Cummings and secondly uh, why I am showing this footage and why this footage is not directly published on his channel and I know that some of you 100% thoroughly hate him now as far as I'm concerned you can hate him you can despise him you can loathe him it's absolutely fine I don't personally but you can um, but yet one thing that I think is very important if not crucial is the fact that you should not and I know some people do but those of you who hate him you should not allow those feelings and emotions you have for the man um, cloud your judgment about the things he researches and the information he shares now I don't always agree with Anthony Cummings particularly on some choices he has made and I told him that okay so it's not like I'm speaking uh, behind his back also because I mean I'm speaking in front of an icon so I think no, no, you can't really call this speaking behind someone's back but I do value his research I do value his work and I have read two of his books and I think he's a very good book right he writes very well I'd like you to please focus on the questions and don't focus on the man who is asking the questions just focus on the questions because the questions are valid and very interesting. Now the reason why this footage is not uh, being published for now on his channel, but it's only published on mine, is because he asked the questions in English. Now the sensei, Geta sensei, does have an overall understanding of English. He can speak some English, but um, he actually answered the questions in Japanese because his English wasn't good enough to be able to explain himself fully in, uh, in, and actually answer these questions fully. So all the answers are in Japanese. Now he asked me to translate what the sensei is saying. So all the subtitles you you will find underneath uh, down below when the sensei is speaking are made by me and for those of you who are new to the community I am an, a Japanese teacher so I teach Japanese for living I have a university degree in Japanese I've studied the language for over 10 years and I have spent four years in Japan so I know what I'm doing I'm a professional I'm not boasting but I'm just sort of giving you my uh, credentials if you will so without further ado this was a big introduction let's get to it I'm here with the Keda Sensei and we're in Wakayama and you can come here and you can train with the Keda Sensei for free, believe it or not, and everybody is welcome. I'm just going to ask him a few questions about Iaido and his thoughts on Iaido because I wanted you to hear it from a, a practicing and a qualified person. What's your name? Uh, my name is Masato Ikeda. And you are the head of Tamiya Ryu for Wakayama. Yeah. Yeah. How long have you been doing uh, Iaido? Uh, 30 years. Right, okay. 30 years. And you are a member of the organization? Which organization? Sodoku Zen Nihon Kendo Renmei. Right. I have some problems uh, with people around the world. People around the world think that. Uh, Koryu is exactly the same as it was when the founder started it. What do you think? Uh,
Okay, let me clarify this one. When, he, when Anthony says people around the world, I have a problem with people around the world because they think that basically he's saying that most people, the people around the world, world think that Yaido and Koryu is the same as it used to be, uh, as the, the art was practiced back in the, in the original times of Samurai. Now, I'd like to underline my opinion on this is that, and I think that Anthony agrees with me, is that of course he's, it's, it's speaking in general terms. Of course there are people who understand this and I'm sure that in the Yaido community there are some people who do realize, in fact Ikeda Sensei is a proof of that, um, that it is not the case. A lot of things have changed and we will see what things have changed in this video so please keep watching if you're interested. But it is true that a lot of people uh, believe that when they see, for example, uh, a Yaido practitioner, when they see a Kenjutsu practitioner, to be honest, even when they see sometimes a Kendo practitioner, they think, oh, that is the, the art of the Samurai. And so they imagine the Samurai doing those things. For example, Samurai doing Shiburi, a lot of people imagine Samurai uh, sitting in Seiza and, and performing techniques from Seiza, which are, which are all things that were added later. So not things that we should imagine Samurai doing in the Sengoku die. There might be some people out there who already know this, but definitely the mass doesn't. Now here is an important linguistic point. For those of you who speak Japanese, you will notice that the sensei, when he talks about the fact that things have changed because of the way they enter, you know, they, they, you change a jidai, you change a, an era, an epoch, and things change culturally because there is a new influence, etc. Now, when he says that, he uses two words that might be confusing for those of you who don't know Japanese well enough, and it's the word tabun, which means maybe, and the word tomoimasu, which means I think. Now, um, the literal translation of what he's saying is things uh, have changed, maybe things have changed, I think. Now, if you translate that literally into English, it sounds like the sensei is not really sure of what he's talking about, but that is a cultural thing which influences the way Japanese express themselves. So it's cultural and linguistic. Let me explain it. In Japanese, you can say, which means this exam is difficult. But the way the Japanese speak, they tend to prefer to say, if they want to be more polite. So it's just a matter of politeness. The addition of I think, it's not because someone is not sure of something, but it's just because if you say something is the way it is, it might sound a bit arrogant. So from their perspective, we should not translate as something, in fact, they even as, as a lack of um, certainty, it is just politeness. They can even use it after the, a certain conjugation of verbs, which is tai, which is what you use when you say you want something. So you can say, for example, uh, Tokyo ni ikitai desu, which means I want to go to Tokyo, but you can also uh, change it into Tokyo ni ikitai to omoimasu, which is slightly more polite. I think I want to go to Tokyo, even if the fact that you want to go to Tokyo is 100% a fact. He's saying tabun, maybe, not because he doesn't, he's not sure of what he's saying, but just because he wants to sound more polite. What elements were added later on? What was added to it? うん、あの、それは、え、時代背景っていうか、バックグラウンド、文化、カルチャー。ジャパニーズカルチャーはずっとチェンジしてるから、その戦国時代、江戸時代、明治、今は平成、チェンジ。文化は変わってきたから、それ
So I think I think it's interesting the fact that he says that uh, tachiwaza are the original ones, meaning that only standing techniques are the ones that most likely the samurai used. And if you think about it, I mean, when you sit in a seiza and you need to perform a technique, and again, this is my opinion, but it is harder to perform a technique. It's more interesting to see someone do that. But um, in the era of the samurai, I don't see why the samurai should put themselves in a more difficult position to perform techniques from. Seiza became common in the Meiji during the Meiji Restoration. So of course we shouldn't imagine all the samurai sitting in Seiza. Okay, uh, apart from the techniques that we have talked about, that is obviously a no-brainer. But we shouldn't imagine the samurai just sitting in Seiza all the time. It's more of something that came, became started to become a Japanese culture and tradition in the Edo Jidai, and it became uh, it was sort of pushed by the government in the major restoration but um, in Sengoku Jidai and even Heian Jidai we shouldn't imagine the samurai sitting in Seiza that doesn't mean that no one ever sat in Seiza back then okay so I'd like to underline this yes we do have some proof that occasionally someone would sit in Seiza but probably in the majority of cases as he says we should imagine the samurai class sitting in Agura and or even more and I will make a dedicated on this on how samurai sat etc um, probably with one knee up and one knee down uh, rather the Nagura and particularly when they were near their master because that is a much more readier position if something were to happen than Seiza would be not to mention that when you sit in Seiza and, and, you, and you, you try this try sitting in Seiza for 20 minutes and see when you stand up if you are combat effective okay <laughs> that would be hilarious so now we look at Iai and Iai Do and it's very beautiful it's very um, slow and artistic but what about real sword fighting? Mm, uh, very good example, uh, you know, Tai Chi, Tai, tai Kyoku Ken. Right. Um, uh, Chinese Kung Fu. Right. Or Beijing to Kade, you know, me, Tai So Yaku every morning. So they were very changed. Honto are fighting technique. Just, uh, exercise? Yes, yes, exercise. Just exercise. So, d are you saying that originally Yai was very practical and now it's like Tai Chi, mm. a relaxing. So, what's the purpose of Yai now? Okay, we need to be careful here with the usage of the word sport. The way, the reason why he's using sport again, we need to see this from the perspective of a Japanese speaker, not the meaning of the word sport in English. First off, please keep in mind he's using the English word and then he uses a Japanese word with, which is shumi, which translates, as you can see, as hobby. And I think that that is the, the correct term here. The way he's using sport, well, first off, I think he chose to use the word sport or sports, like he says in Japanese, because he's using an English word and it sounds exotic to them. So that's why sometimes they use English words and he does that quite often. He uses chenji instead of kawaru a few times, so or meaning change. So that, that happens. But it doesn't mean that for him yaido is a sport in a Western point of view. So Yaido is not like football and the same for Koryu. That's not what the sensei is saying here. He's saying that he's getting closer to how a modern person perceives a sport and then he gives, he gives the good word for it which is Shumi, a hobby. So it just means that since we are not living in an era where we, we have to actually use the katana to kill people, then it's more like a hobby and it's closer to what a modern person perceives as a sport. Because again, we always have to see things through the spectrum of comparison with the original samurai era. So, uh, if com particularly if compared to the way uh, Yaido, Kenjutsu and all these techniques were learned from, a actual, from an actual samurai, because he had to learn these things not because it was entertaining for him, but because his life would depend on these things. If the founder came back from, if the founder had a time machine and came back, what do you think now he would think? What do you 
do. Uh, I don't know that. <laughs> I don't find it. Ah, right, okay. Okay. And what is it about to you? That, ah, so no, 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 どうやって傷つけるかエフェクティブを考えてるから問題ないんですけどもその後でさっきも言った時代背景とかカルチャー文化がついてきて例えば儒教が入ってきて秘教とかいう感覚が入ってきたんですねだから戦国時代そのものには秘教っていう感覚はなかったみたいですねだから暗殺してもいいし、えー、十人がかりで一人を倒してもノープログラムでも江戸時代に入ってきて儒教とか幕府の教えがあって戦ってはいけないっていうことになってくると1対1が正々堂々とした戦いそれも刀だったら刀刀に槍とか刀に何々かは反則向こうは長いじゃないかとか言い出すそ,そういうことを言い出したらもう全然技が変わってきますよねそういうことですでだからいっぱいそういう教えとか思想とか哲学とかいうのがくっついてきてディファレントになるチェーンしてくるだから技自体もし今今の時代でも殺し合いが始まっていつ刀で切っても OK な時代になったら多分また元に戻ると思います、うん、それは人間のすることだからI really like it when he says that the original Yai was very practical. Of course, we can, we can say this for Kenjutsu, we can say this for everything really、uh, that has to do with martial arts.、Um, if you take a martial art and put it into a context where if you're not proficient and if, you, if the martial art is not effective, you are going to lose your life. And in terms of battle, so if you want to sort of look at it from grander, a grand scale, a, a bigger per perspective, then and, and you, will, you, Oda Nobunaga, will lose your battle if your men are not effective in combat. But then, of course,、um, all those techniques that are just the techniques don't need to be good looking, the techniques don't need to be、uh, particularly fancy、uh, or anything, but they just need to work. Okay, the, all the spirituality, all these things were added later during a time of peace, and this is basically what the sensei is telling us here.、Um, the inner meaning. And, and the artistic representations are something which was born in a time where these techniques were not there to save your life. Things during the Sengoku period were much more brutal. And I would say also before that, even, even all the way back to Heian Jidai. Of course, Yaido did not exist back then, but I'm just saying any martial art, any martial、um, tradition at the times of war, at times of war, would be much more brutal and effective. So. Many people in the West think that Iaido students are very good or very knowledgeable at sword fighting. They think Iaido students know real sword fighting. What do you think? Okay, here is my opinion on this thing that he says Iaido students.、Um, And then I suppose you could also relate this to Kenjutsu.、Um, don't actually know real sword fighting. Okay, we should be careful not to misunderstand this. It doesn't mean that a person who has studied 20 years of Yaido and 13 years of Kenjutsu has wasted his entire life, okay? Because these martial arts now have an inner meaning, a, a sort of purpose of personal and inner growth, including Kendo. We can also in, in, in put Kendo within this scope. But of course, what I think is that if you take someone who has never handled a sword and you give him a real sword and you tell him fight to death, And you do the same thing with a Yaido master. Well, of course, a Yaido master will still be very effective if compared to someone who isn't trained because he has trained reflexes, you know how to grip the sword. Although, grips, you know, we could talk about that because, of course, some grips in Kendo are more for scoring points than to actual fight. So, perhaps, you know, that, that those things might be problematic in a real fight. But aside that, notwithstanding that,、um, a person who has trained the usage of, of weapons 
and after all the modifications of Edo, Jidai, etc., and Meiji restoration, then he will still be more effective. So it's not like, I don't think he means that these techniques are completely useless, okay? That's not what he means. But I think what he means is, if you compare again a modern day Yaido practitioner to a samurai, who has actually been on the battlefield, who has fought to death, then of course the modern day Yaido practitioner or Kenjutsu practitioner has no experience of that whatsoever. So if you compare them together, you know, there are a lot of aspects, psychological aspects, the idea of seeing people being dismembered around you is very different from, you know, staying in a dojo and practicing in a situation of safety, okay? So I think this is what he means, or at least this is what I think. So you could consider these to be three different stages. Someone who's completely not trained, someone who is trained but in a time of peace and someone who is trained in a time of war and of course and this is how we should imagine samurai to be i have seen some sword schools are very fast very rapid mm. is that why why did some stay fast and some went very slow what's your opinion <laughs> なんのスポーツでも何のテクニックでもそうですけど、初めはゆっくり大きくならって、だんだん早く小さい技になって巧妙な技にしていくんですけども、この巧妙な技はもう今の時代必要がないので、そこまでいかない。もうジャストこれで
this mirror is shattered because no one really needs anymore to practice all the things the way they were practiced back then but things start to gain spiritual meanings the, the, in fact the idea of the the samurai and his spirit dwelling in the katana all these things are Edo period concepts okay the times of peace and when he says that only parts of the original um, schools are found in, in, in the several schools, I think that that's how we should imagine it. That each school that we have today, because you've got of course schools which practice fast draw, schools that practice very slow um, motion, uh, mo movements, etc. These schools have pieces of the original and then all the other things that were added to it. This is the way I like uh, to imagine this concept. All right then, well I hope that you enjoyed this video. Personally I found it fascinating. The reason why I found it fascinating and I really like the interview is because um, I am fascinated by samurai uh, era. And it's very interesting I think to try and realize how the samurai really looked, what they did, how they behaved and all those things that the way they fought the everyday life for the samurai. Because when we imagine samurai sometimes we're just um, overwhelmed by the things that are shown in the gaming in industry that are shown in the um, in the media for example and uh, on, on films and Hollywood and television and all these things are profoundly confusing and it's interesting to instead shed light and understanding how the samurai class actually lived how they fought what they did now I wish to thank you of course for your time and thank you for watching I'd like to thank Anthony Cummings for sharing this footage and this interview with me of course if you like this video please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And remember, the Metatron has spread its wings. Goodbye.